What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode of Moonshot Monday. Today, we're talking about the Cybershaw. Will Tesla launch an electric rickshaw for the Indian market? What is the potential of electric rickshaws in general? Um, sort of a crazy Moonshot uh, theoretical episode here today. I'm really, really excited. This all started um, just about a month ago when I was researching Tesla entering the Indian market, um, the Indian electric vehicle market, transportation market, grid, and energy ecosystem. Looking into all of that, did an awesome interview with Vivas Kumar um, that I put out a couple weeks ago all about the Indian energy and transportation markets. Huge shout out to him. Learned so much. Um, and in doing that, you know, Tesla is not in India right now. They did launch Model 3 reservations in India a long time ago. They have said they want to get into the Indian market. India, already 1.3 billion people, poised to be the largest country by population, huge GDP, you know, massive, massive opportunity um, to reinvent their electrical and transportation systems um, with green renewable technology. And I think Tesla has a huge potential to play a role um, in the future of India's uh, development there. And so that got me to thinking of what if I could go to the drawing board, if I was Tesla's internal product R&D team, what vehicle would we design from scratch with our technology, the atomic unit of that amazing, cheap, efficient, long-lasting, durable battery cell that Tesla has created, maybe the Maxwell cells, who knows? Um, but you know, what product would they leverage? What electric vehicle would they create that would work for the Indian market? So that got me thinking, and that is how we came up with, you know, what if rickshaws were electric? You know, what if somebody reimagined the rickshaw to make it cool, fast, versatile, um, you know, and then on top of that, we wanted to leverage this extremely durable cyber design, you know, the cyber truck. When Tesla unveiled that, it set a new paradigm for, you know, how vehicles were made potentially. This exoskeleton design, no paint, stainless steel, um, and that spawned a ton of different lookalikes of products of cyber this, cyber that. I even put out a moonshot Monday about the cyber van. Um, but now we have decided that for the Indian market, there's an iteration of this cyber sort of concept that would work so, so well, and it is the cyber cyber shaw an electric rickshaw utilizing the stainless steel design that would be electrically charged that would have a solar roof that could recharge up to 10 miles per day this would be an extremely versatile vehicle um, that would be much smaller than a car it could either have three passengers in the back people mode 64 feet of cubic cargo space for you know carrying stuff so this could be a very versatile vehicle for either me moving people or stuff so so this is our concept, the electric rickshaw, starting at $6,000, 150 mile an hour range, up to 10 miles of recharge per day with the solar roof, you know, uh, pretty, pretty zippy speed, um, you know, with a swappable battery. I don't know, we set a 16 kilowatt hour battery pack. Upon further review, I think that might be a little bit too big. These are all estimates, all speculation. Tesla has nothing to do with this, um, but I we came up with it. And I wanna give a huge shout out to Albor's Design, who came up with the actual rendering of this cyber shop Been working with him. Amazing job, you definitely gotta check out his stuff. Thanks, Albor's. And Viv, who uh, is a good friend of mine, you probably all know her if you follow Tesla Twitter, and she uh, produced this, you know, spec ad. So. You know, let's talk about the opportunity. Why does the cyber shaw make sense? You know, what is going on here? So the, the one thing I noticed with India is that there's very, very few passenger cars sold per year, especially adjusted for population. You know, this is the, the market of Indian vehicles sold. In 2019, about 4 million vehicles sold. In 2040, they're only expecting 6.5 million cars to be sold. And so if you think about that, you know, the US, we sell like 20 million cars a year in the US with 350 million people. India, 1.3 billion people, they're only selling 4 million cars a year. I mean, the per capita amount of cars um, is just so, so much smaller in India. Part of that, cars are too expensive, but the real reason is they just don't have any space. They have no space in India um, for four-wheeled passenger cars, so it's just not how it works. And so, in many ways, I've been thinking that India is maybe not, you know, it's not going to like switch to cars. We're not the future. Maybe India is the future where, you know, urbanization occurs. Cities are much more crowded. Um, populations are skyrocketing in these urban environments, and there's just not enough space for cars. You know, 80% of vehicle trips here in the U.S. that you make in your car only have one passenger. So, if you think about it like that, there's five empty spots, you know, it's not that efficient for a Model 3 or a Model Y with all these batteries, with all this raw materials um, and equipment and technology that's designed to move around five people and stuff to only move around one person a lot of the time. It, it's not an efficient allocation of the very limited battery resources that we have. And so 
you know, India is, is like, I think a preview of the future where, you know, 80% of their vehicle market is two and three wheelers. It's totally dominated um, by, you know, rickshaws, electric motorcycles, scooters, that sort of stuff. 80% um, is domestic market share for vehicle sales. And I think as urbanization continues, you know, cities of the future will look a lot more like India in terms of vehicle uh, types than the US. And so that's what I've been really fascinated about, you know, what would Tesla's launch be here? Because Tesla sort of has a hole in their product lineup where they don't have a personal mobility device. And I can't blame them for this. I mean, they're starting out with cars, crushing it there. Um, and Elon Musk also has famously gotten into a motorcycle accident. And so he doesn't want to create a motorcycle product, or at least for a while, because, um, because of that. And he's sort of scared. That really hits home with me because I got into a scooter crash, you know, a bunch of years back too. So I personally don't like scooters or motorcycles because they just scare me. And I think they are super, super dangerous. And Tesla, everything they make is extremely fast. You know, an extremely fast Tesla motorcycle would also be extremely dangerous. So that's one of the, one of the reasons they haven't entered that space. But I still think there is such a big opportunity here. Why did that startup bird skyrocket in value to billions of dollars the fastest we had ever seen? Because they had unlocked a massive consumer pain point and use case for per electric personal mobility devices. People love this. There's a huge need for it in our urban environments. And I think it's we've seen it explode. Boosted board, even though they went out of business. Dope little startup with the electric uh, skateboard. I'm in Seattle right now. Go around everywhere. There's like these electric one wheelers. I mean, there's been an explosion of these micro EV personal mobility devices. I think that's potentially one of the biggest threats to Tesla in the long term is not addressing the segment of a personal mobility device, which I think is booming. So this opportunity, and I think India is really validating how big this could be in the future. And so that's, you know, I'm also an investor in a company called Arkimoto. A bunch of you probably know a three-wheeled vehicle looks kind of like the Cybershaw that has two wheels in front um, and not, you know, two wheels in back. But um, the thing I love about the Arkimoto is it gave me that feeling of like being in between a car and a motorcycle. So way more efficient, has higher MPGE than the Tesla because, you know, it can only carry around two people. But if you have only one person in the Tesla versus one person in the Arkimoto, the Arkimoto is way more efficient, even though the battery technology is nowhere near as good. So I think there's a true use case for that Arkimoto. And I love test driving it because I was able to, you know, get that feeling of being outside, handlebars, super fun, super mobile, just like having a blast, honestly, and feeling like I was outside adventuring, um, a lot more connected with the outside world than a car, but a lot safer than a motorcycle. It was like this really good in-between sweet spot of comfort, safety, but accessibility and small footprint. Anyway, the point is, I think Tesla is, is missing a hole in its product lineup, or maybe not missing, but just hasn't expanded yet to a personal mobility device. Is that an electric scooter? Is that an Arkimoto looking thing? Should they buy Arkimoto? This is something I've floated in a ton of different episodes and sort of give them access to their battery technology, um, which can vastly improve the performance of the Arkimoto, help them out with manufacturing. And then all of a sudden Tesla, you know, they don't have to give their batteries to a car company they're competing directly with. They give it to this other company that gives them exposure into another vertical. And think about it like this. You know, Tesla could have, I think for Tesla in India, they should do kind of what they're doing in China, per partner with the government, figure out how to build a gigafactory there, not just make it replicating U.S. products, but really start to cater products for that individual geography, just like in China, how they're hiring designers to actually build something that looks like potentially a Model 2, a smaller, compact uh, sort of sedan car built for the Chinese market, designed there by Chinese designers who work at Tesla. Um, and so that's, you know, we'll see what comes out of that. But that to me is where I got the inspiration of the electric rickshaw. You set up a design center in India. What are these engineers with the Tesla technology going to do? I think they would come up um, and, and launch an electric rickshaw. The electric rickshaw market, it, it, funny in India, there's actually even reports on just the in, electric rickshaw market, which is exploding, um, growing like a 15 or 16% CAGR. And they actually, even by uh, 2030, 30 non-electric rickshaws they're expecting could be 46 million sales per year. And they even say in this report here, this annual market size would present an opportunity for Indian companies to become leaders in EV technology on a global scale. So, you know, the car market in India, not that exciting, only six and a half million units by 2040, but the, the opportunity for electric two and three wheelers is insane. Another stat to throw at you right now about the electric rickshaw market, 11,000 are sold every single month in India. So even just in India, this electric rickshaw market is actually like pretty, pretty big. Like I think Tesla could be selling hundreds of thousands of electric rickshaws per year just in India. And I know a ton of you have mentioned, you know, there's other electric 
brick shaw startups um, that are costing two to three thousand dollars the cyber shaw at a six thousand dollar price is way too expensive maybe you know i don't know i did a lot of back and forth calculations but i think a if tesla's going to come into the market it's going to be a premium higher priced electric rickshaw with longer range maybe faster charging better batteries basically a higher quality more durable version and i think you would amortize some of that cost over time because if it lasts longer it can do more longer range deliveries it can you don't have to recharge it as often you know the operating cost might be less it might you might be able to get more revenue out of it so in that case i do think that will offset some of the higher price but there's no doubt this is going to be a premium product that tesla will have to invest a ton in to scale to get down to the price and that's something where you know I'm not totally convinced this is a good idea or not because I truly think India will, you know, really cater towards its domestic companies. That's where they've leaned to, into already. Um, you know, they have a ton of explosion of electric uh, scooter and rickshaw companies. That's why all these reports are predicting such massive growth in that market. So there's already a ton of innovation in this sector. But I do think that Tesla with the brand, with the ability for, you know, manufacturing and innovating on that and the ability to have incredible battery technology, you know, does make a use case for them if they were going to go in India. India to, you know, I think this is the first thing to launch is an electric rickshaw, sort of a premium luxury version. My favorite, the coolest part of it is um, the solar recharging roof. This was sort of just a wild feature. I actually had even wanted to put solar pop out wings on the Cybershaw because my favorite feature of the cyber truck is the solar pop out wings that were like really briefly hinted at in the presentation or unveiling of the Cybertruck. Yeah. But, um, I, I can't find any info about it now, but that just got me thinking like, hey, the Cybertruck is supposed to recharge like up to 15 miles a day, I think with just the back covered. And then if you have the solar wings pop out, maybe 30 miles a day. So I was like, man, so the cyber vehicle lineup, maybe there's enough weight in that new steel frame. The batteries are good enough to where they can, and the solar glass technology is good enough to where they can implement that on the roof of the Cybershaw too. And you could actually just charge up from the sun up to 10 miles a day, which I think is, you know, who knows if this will actually work or not, but I love, that's like my favorite feature of the Cybershaw. Additionally, if you'll notice in the video, we mentioned battery swapping because the grid in India is really not ready for rapid charging, super unreliable. The ability to swap a battery if you needed to would be really advantageous. Um, and it's something that a lot of these micro EV startups in India are already working on. So, you know, here's my moonshot. It's less about Tesla launching the Cybershaw, more about just me wanting to create content to think outside of the box, to do ideas. Like, I'm so pumped that we were able to, huge shout out to, to Albors and to Viv for like bringing this idea to life and being able to show it to you because I have no idea if Tesla will ever do this. There's already a bunch of electric rickshaws, but it's just going to the drawing board to show you, to think outside the box about this amazing technology Tesla's developed with the drivetrain, the powertrain, manufacturing, batteries, and the ability to, you know, use that technology they've already developed to enter all of these different product verticals that are so exciting that could make billions of dollars of revenue. I mean, the Cybershaw could make Tesla billions. Um, you know, this right here, this stat, 20 million electric rickshaws a year is the potential for India in the long term. And I think the key thing here is it might not just be India. The electric rickshaw might be the future of moving people and stuff around in an urban environment for a bunch of different super populated cities. And so in that way, I think developing this, getting ahead of the curve could be a really, really smart move for Tesla and India. And so, I don't know, I love the potential here. I love the idea to just think outside the box. And I think there's a clear product gap lineup in personal smaller footprint mobility products for Tesla. Is it a three-wheel rickshaw? Is it an Arkimoto thing with two wheels in the front? Is it an electric scooter? Uh, you know, is it a Vespa kind of thing? You know, what is, is it an e-bike? You know, will Tesla address this segment of the market or do they not want to? And then we have this whole concept of autonomy. Is this, uh, is the Cybershaw gonna come with autopilot? A bunch of you have mentioned that, you know, is the ability eventually when autonomy gets good to just have these smaller footprint vehicles autonomously navigating around cities, moving people and stuff. Does that form factor look something like the Cyber Rickshaw? And you know, another big component of this I love is the exosteel skeleton of the Cybertruck is super, in theory, there's no paint. It's super easy and cheap to produce. It's super rugged. It's super durable. I mean, this could be a new paradigm in making it cheaper. Um, like, I, like I think, you know, the Cybertruck people were wowed by how cheap the price was. And so I think leveraging that sort of technology for different products to be super disruptive, like the Cybershaw, um, where no, I don't think anyone else is using an exoskeleton design for a rickshaw. Maybe there's a reason for that. But um, they can address different vehicle segments. And so this is what gets me excited about Tesla. You know, I have... You know, there's, they also even mentioned here, Smart E, an Uber style app using 800 plus E rickshaws around New Delhi. We also got Amazon announcing a bunch of electric rickshaws to do deliveries in India. Um, so this is happening. And I think Tesla, 
could come in with the cyber rickshaw. Like, I would love to know what you all think about this. And, you know, did this help you think outside the box? I want to come up with a ton more videos like this about just wild theoretical products that Tesla and other companies could produce, bring them to life for you all to just get us thinking outside the box. You know, what is hyperchange? What is the point of this videos to give you ideas, to inspire you, to help us think about how to electrify our transport and energy systems. You know, I just think we need more people coming up with crazy ideas and pitching them, whether this idea sucks or not, whether it happens or not, who cares? But I wanted to put it out there um, so that it could exist in the world because I think in the future, there is going to be a huge tens of billions of dollars of market cap created for these electric personal mobility devices. Will Tesla play in this market? Will they launch an electric rickshaw? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, this is Hyperchange Moonshot Monday. Subscribe if you haven't already. Huge shout out for again to Albors and Viv for bringing this idea to life. So awesome to work with you. I hope I get to work with you again. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. You know, would you cop the Cybershaw? What other wild concept products should we bring to life? Huge shout out to our Patreon supporters, producers, fun in the channel. I don't want to hint too much, but there is a major brand refresh thing in the works where if I'm going to raise all my Patreon prices. If you had it now, you're going to be locked in. Not promoting it, just saying. Anyway, I'll see y'all guys next. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.